Welcome to the Jewish Sport Report Soccer Spotlight. I'm your host, Ethan Zahn, and I'm so excited to welcome my friend Jeff Agus to the Soccer Spotlight. Jeff was a four-time All-American at UVA. He's an MLS champion and defender of the year, former member of the U.S. men's national team. He's a member of the National Soccer Hall of Fame and the Jewish Sports Hall of Fame, and currently the Senior Vice President of Competition at Major League Soccer. Goose, welcome to the Soccer Spotlight. I got to uh, make you my publicist from now on, Ethan. Great to be, to be on. I appreciate the time. Uh, it's so great to see you. I mean, the last time we hung out was actually in Israel at the Maccabee Games. And uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. But I just love for everyone to learn a little bit more about your upbringing in Texas and what you know being Jewish meant to you back then. Yeah, I was actually born in Europe. I was born in Switzerland, in Geneva. We didn't spend a lot of time there, uh, but we did move to Johannesburg, South, uh, South Africa when I was young had a South African accent when we moved to the States, but I was still young. Uh, we moved to Charlotte, Atlanta, but my formidable years was was spent in, in Dallas uh, from the time I was about seven or eight years old till the time I graduated from high school. So I was in, in Texas under the Friday night lights for a good 10 years. Uh, and that's where I, I, I found a love of the game. A, a lot of my friends played soccer. I wound up playing all, a lot of sports. I played American football, swam, ba basketball, uh, but I really loved uh, soccer and uh, really um, uh, navigated or gravitated to to the sport, um, had an enjoyable time. And then when I graduated high school, went to University of Virginia in, in Charlottesville. Yeah, you had a great career. You were a four-time All-American under Coach Bruce Arena. 1989, you were the co-champions with Santa Clara, but we don't need to talk about that. Uh, you know, what was that experience like for you? It was incredible. Um, I always knew from the time I was 14 or 15 that I wanted to be a professional soccer player. So moving into the college space was one step closer to that. Um, and the way Bruce um, put the teams together, the environment, it was a very professional setup. And, and so it was exactly what I was looking for. And you couple the athletic piece, the soccer piece with the academic piece at UVA, I went, I went through, got my degree as a, as a, in, in, in a McIntyre School of Commerce mm -hmm. with a business degree, a BS in commerce. Um, so I think I had the best of both worlds. It was an incredible time there. Yeah. And then growing up in Texas and playing in high school and then in college, were you part of, you know, the Jewish community and Jewish life? I, I grew up going to, we went to Tuesday night school um, when I was growing up in Texas yeah. uh, and really all of my friends uh, were there and we talked about soccer the entire time. So uh, my my Jewish literature is not very deep, but we did talk about great Jewish players uh, in, in the sports, which, which is a, sh a short conversation at best. <laughs> That is true. But you are one of the great Jewish players in the whole world and specifically soccer. So we, we you are a member of the uh, Jewish Sports Hall of Fame, right? That is correct. I was inducted this past uh, summer in uh, in Israel and it was an incredible honor uh, to be to be nominated uh, and inducted, but to be around the people that were inducted, uh, some incredible people, some of the people from the, the 72 games in oh, wow. uh yeah, in Munich. So it was an, it was an, an incredible experience. Yeah, that must have been absolutely fantastic. You know, speaking of like your international career, you did play for the U.S. men's national team. You were in the pool for a really long time. You actually played in a World Cup. Um, not only that, and more importantly, you played in the Maccabee Games in 85 and 89, right? So, you know, if you had to make a comparison between playing in a World Cup and playing in the Maccabee games, how would you rate them both? <laughs> well, well, um, I would put them uh, against one another, but I will say that there's a direct line between the two. In 85 and, and 89, I started in 85. That was my first Maccabee games. I was 17 years old, and I wound up um, I, I wound up uh, rooming with Dave Sarikin. Uh, oh, he wow. was my he was my roommate, who was then the assistant coach at University of Virginia. Wait, was he playing at that time? He was playing. He wow. was uh, he was playing, and and I was the team captain, um, and so the, one of the 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 young kind of whippersnapper and uh, the old wily veteran uh, <laughs> were put together, um, and Dave and I just just hit it off. And he he's a phenomenal person for for those who don't know him, yeah. um, and I think without having that uh, relationship, I may have not gone to Virginia. Mm. Uh, I may have gone to another other school. Um, so, so, you know, Dave was really a, a big influence in my decision to go to UVA, which then gave me the opportunity to meet Bruce, which then moved my career on with DC United and the national team and the world cup team. So that's the link is that I, I didn't have that experience in 80, in 85, 
it may be a whole completely different um, timeline and, and milestones uh, with the national team. Wow. And then Dave Sarakin was the assistant coach at DC United when you're playing there, right? That was correct. Yeah. Dave, Dave and Bruce were, were both there. Um, and then, and then Dave went on and did his thing in Chicago. So um, yeah, I can't say enough for that experience in, in 85. Um, and then 89 was, was just, uh, you know, icing on the, uh, on the cake. It was an incredible yeah. experience. And so, you know, playing internationally, playing in the Maccabee games, MLS did, you know, being Jewish, ever impact your game positive negative on the field off the field um it, it, i mean it, it was always something that was a part of me um yeah. but but it wasn't uh def- it didn't define who i was um i i don't think there was a you know religion was not the the biggest piece of whether you could uh, deliver a ball <laughs> over 60 yards or not um so so there was was little impact re- regarding sports but you know, I always knew of, of that heritage. I always felt it. Yeah. Um, there weren't, weren't a lot, as I said before, there weren't a lot of Jewish athletes playing um, in soccer or, or a lot of professional sports. But as I've come to realize there's more than you think. Um, and um, especially going through the, the Hall of Fame uh, this year um, and meeting different people, uh, there's a, a lot of Jewish sports history uh, that I think we have a very proud heritage around. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, you know, I was actually doing some research for, you know, the sport report in the current World Cup. I uh, couldn't really identify many Jewish players. Um, you know, it looks like Matt Turner, who's the goalkeeper for the U.S. team, uh, half Jewish. DeAndre Yedlin has a connection uh, to being Jewish. But other than that, I've been doing some digging and I haven't really found that many people on other national teams uh, so far, which is really interesting to think about. Now, it is a World Cup winter, and you have played in the World Cup, as we said. Do you have any predictions? Are you rooting for anyone other than the United States? Well, um, no, I'm, I'm very much rooting for the United States, and and obviously Canada to, to do well, given our, our, our relationship in, in MLS. But um, I'm going to be following the United States very closely. Um, we're in a group where I think we can do well. I think we can get out uh, as long as we perform, um, you know, the I had very different experiences in 1998 in France, where we were 32 out of 32 teams, <laughs> uh, one of the worst teams in, at, at the World Cup, but we were in a World Cup. And then uh, in South Korea and Japan in 2002, one of the best performances, the best performances to date of U.S. soccer, uh, getting to the quarterfinals, losing to Germany on a uh, possible handball on, on the line by course of strings. <laughs> yes. Um, but, you know, a lot of great memories from 2002. Uh, beating Portugal, beating Mexico, uh, just some fantastic uh, memories. Hopefully that will continue. I would love for this team to beat our record and get past the quarterfinals. Uh, I'd love for them to go deep, but they've got to they've got to win um, and get out of their group. Yeah, I mean, I absolutely agree. The the 2002 World Cup, I was actually there. I was fortunate enough. I just won Survivor, and uh, so I was asked to be the inside reporter for the U.S. Men's National Team with Phyllis Electronics. So. I don't know if you remember, but I was there. I was on the bus. I went to the training field. I got to meet all the players. For me, that was literally the highlight of my soccer career is to, you know, to be with you guys and just kind of tag along and and shadow everything you were doing. So that was such an experience. And also that that year, well, 2001, 2002, you were MLS Defender of the Year. And that year I happened to win Survivor. So very good year for Jews, if you think about it. My Um, guess is you made a little more shekels than I did. Jeff, I want to show you this. Not many people get to see this. And because you're special, this is the shirt that I wore on Survivor. You're allowed to bring two T-shirts. I brought one. It was my Maccabee USA Israel 2001 jersey. So I think- Very strong, right? Um, so now you have uh, done an incredible job, you know, on the field. You've transitioned into an, a, a really uh, awesome position at senior vice president of competition at Major League Soccer. What does that mean? What was the transition <laughs> like getting out of soccer and into the front office? Yeah, there's sort of two questions is what's your job and then what does that actually mean? Yeah. Uh, because it, it, it is somewhat opaque. So my, my official title, senior vice president for competition, I've also added the medical department as well. So now I oversee two different departments. Actually, uh, Mark Abbott, the deputy commissioner, came to me in 2018 uh, and and asked me to take over both the operations department and the medical department. Little did I know that in about a 12-month span, we would have a global pandemic and our medical department would would be highly focused on trying to manage the the, uh, COVID (laughs) pandemic, which we're still uh, doing today. 
Um, had I known that was going to happen, I may have had a different answer uh, in terms of taking that on. But it has really been uh, an incredible experience, uh, incredible learning experience on the medical side. On the competition side, you know, our role is to make sure uh, that we manage the league competition with an in integrity um, and implement, um, you know, initiatives that improve the quality of play. And that's really the, the the goal is to make the best product possible on the field so that we continue to engage, uh, have, have higher fan engagement and, and more market share, bring more fans in. Um, so everything from player roster construction, uh, officiating, discipline, and everything that's sort of inside the white lines is is within uh, within our purview. So. Um, I am I am incredibly privileged to lead a great team uh, that uh, essentially tries to move this game forward um, and tries to give it, um, you know, uh, support throughout uh, our 28, 29, 30 teams. Uh, but ultimately, my goal is is to do what um, what was not able to be done when I was young and watching the NASL was create a legacy for those players that are here today, uh, that that are former players like myself and that will be in the league at, at some point. You know, we all remember the New York Cosmos, but we don't remember all the other teams because of the league had folded. So I wanted to make sure that I wanted to be part of something that would create this legacy and can continue to have Major League Soccer continue. Love that. Um, you know, you know, growing up Jewish, I was always, you know, we're always taught about, um, you know, living by Jewish values, community, tzedakah, tikkun olam. Have any of those values you know, played a role in your professional career off the field in MLS or even playing with a team? Yeah, I mean, community is a big piece of what we do um, day to day and what we think about day to day. You know, if you look at the MLS logo, uh, the three stars, one's for club, one's for country, and the other one's for community. Oh, wow. um, we, have 20, we have 28 teams, 29 teams next year, and there's a huge amount of focus put into those communities. Uh, not only to give back, but to be um, the North Star in, in, in those in those communities. So community is a big, a, a really big piece of it. Yeah. Um, and, and look, I, it's always, a, you know, your, your, the, your, your, your Jewishness or the part of you that's Jewish uh, is always going to be a part of you um, wherever you go. And so you, you can always relate to people uh, with, with similar backgrounds, or other types of backgrounds. So it's always going to be a, a, an integral piece of, of who you are. Yeah. And you, you mentioned earlier about leaving a legacy. You know, your legacy obviously is is strong. You know, we talked about the National uh, Soccer Hall of Fame, but you were also inducted into the uh, Jewish Sports Hall of Fame in Israel. That's where we, we we saw each other mention that. But what is it like to be recognized by your peers, by the coaches, by the soccer community, and then obviously the Jewish community? Well, it's a great honor. I mean, uh, it, you know, you just hope to be part of good things, uh, winning teams, but really, it's about the people you meet. And so like meeting, ha having a relationship with you, having a relationship with, with teammates from the Maccabea teams like Dave Sarek, and as I was saying before, and others that, have, that, that, I, that I, I've come to know, those are the great things that um, have, have come out of this. Uh, I remember a lot of the wins. I remember a lot of those times. But the, the things that really stick with me are those relationships um, and understanding um, how important those are in what you do every single day. So that's that's really been the gift of of the success that uh, I've been fortunate to have. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, getting to meet you has been a really awesome <laughs> part of my life as well, just to let you know that. Um, all right, last question, man. Okay, let's talk about the perfect circle, the chosen meal, the bagel. You know, it's like the soccer ball <laughs> of my life. I rely on the bagels. I rely on a soccer ball. So describe to me your perfect bagel. How would you prepare it? What would you put on it? When would you eat it? I need to know. Well, I have a, I have a go-to uh, as often as I can, but I don't do it often because it's it's not good for the, for, for the stomach. Um, <laughs> I, I have like an, an everything bagel because I have to have everything on. Yeah. A little bit of sour cream, some onion, some tomato, um, I'm not a big fish person, so I okay. don't have locks. So I, but I do know, I do know a lot of people like that. <laughs> uh, but I, I try to have, uh, some, something like that once a week, maybe once every couple of weeks. Uh, cause it's a lot, it's a lot. Yeah. The bagel's a lot, especially in New York. Yes, man. Good answer. I like it. Well, uh, Jeff, it's been a pleasure having you on the soccer spotlight. I wish you all the continued success in your life. And, uh, I can't wait to see you again soon. I appreciate it. Hope, hope to see you soon as well.
All right. Take care.